Oh, so we're live. Sorry. I'm a little bit behind today. I have to be honest. I haven't been feeling good. So that's not a product placement either. That's just me showing you I'm eating cough drops. And so it has been a, it's been a brutal week. Um, and that, I probably say that every week, to be honest. Um, I really don't know. But this week was our crazy shipping, um, crazy shipping week. I think we shipped out maybe 150 packages, something like that. Um, it was pretty intense. And what made it worse is just the fact that I wasn't feeling good. So you can see, like, my voice is just now coming back to, like, where it normally is. Um, let me turn that off so I got a good signal. So hopefully the signal strength uh, stays up because my, my internet has been funny lately. Um, so I don't know what's going on with it, but shout out to you guys, faithful subscribers, um, because I've been so sick this week that I didn't make any videos. Um, I didn't make the, the nano fish video because like my voice was just disappearing and I felt terrible. Um, so I didn't do that, but I did, I did make a shipping video for you guys. Um, just because I wanted you to see like what we do when it comes to shipping our process for shipping and uh just the the things that go into it so you'll see in that video like how bad my voice was like i was watching it back today and it is literally terrible um absolutely terrible let me exit out of this um you guys let me know how the stream is make sure it's not uh running behind um but i will go through and sh give a shout out to everybody um, just see who all was in here. Let's see who was first. Danny's Aquarium was first. Shout out to Danny. Thank you for uh, hanging out and being first. Uh, Kevin Hyatt said he's here. Uh, and we got Simply Shrimp. Uh, Flynn's Fish Form. What's going on, Flynn? Uh, I'm so excited to meet most of these people at the Aquatic Experience. Um, that's coming up pretty quick. Um, let me turn on this light behind me. I always like it better when the, the fish tank light's on. Let me turn it on real fast. There we go. All right. So now that the the mood is set, uh, we can we can live stream efficiently now. And I think because I'm eating cough drops today, maybe I won't yawn. Uh, but let's not jinx me. All right. Don't do that to me. <laughs> oh man. So who else is here? We got Turtle Girl, Beth. Uh, Josh Rug, Rory, Nisi's in the house. What's going on, Nisi? Zanza, JW Aquariums, Fish Fam Aquatics, uh, Candy, Neon Tetra. Um, a lot of great people already here. So shout out to you guys. Um, seems like everything's going good. <laughs> yeah, it's looking good. Take your time to recover, Rob. Danny said, thank you so much. Um, but yeah, so it was, let's see, Ellie's Aquascape said, Rob, we will always be here for you. Don't rush yourself. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, that means a lot to me. LJ Aquatic says, can you keep crystal blacks and blue dreams in the same tank? You sure can. Uh, they won't interbreed, but one will thrive and the other will not. Uh, Stormy Mist in the house. What's going on, Emma? Emma is my, my favorite young girl YouTuber. Uh, she's just so cute, and uh, she's always here supporting me, so got to show love. Um, but anyway, so tonight we are talking about uh, Taiwan Bees. And uh, I just wanted to talk about them because um, I really, really want to get into them like hardcore because it's been so long. Um, if you guys didn't notice, I've been focusing on beginner shrimp for the past probably three and a half years, as long as the business has been around Flip Aquatics. Shout out to Flip Aquatics. <laughs> uh, but it's been around for so long, or I've been focusing on beginner shrimp for so long because um, I, that's who I, I wanted to grow the hobby. And you don't grow the hobby by introducing expensive shrimp uh, you grow the hobby by introducing beginner shrimp that everyone can keep and uh, so that was my focus so I feel like we got a pretty good grip on the beginner shrimp and uh, and some of the people that have been with us for the full three and a half years they're kind of moving on to the bigger stuff and so I want to move on with them like I, I want to do some stuff too um, we talked like what last week about me getting a or no, two weeks ago about me getting a 400 gallon aquarium that is simply going to be a Taiwan B tank um, it is going to be so awesome. Uh, I can't wait to get that going. And so 
super excited about that. But with uh, with me doing so much with Taiwan Bees, I really wanted to start uh, getting into it more, um, doing some research, figuring out you know what's what, how you cross this shrimp to get that shrimp. Like I want to start learning all this stuff um, that I haven't you know really picked up on before because I've been focusing on like tiger shrimp, I've been focusing on crystal reds, crystal blacks. Uh, I've been doing basic Taiwan bees. Uh, I've been doing a lot with like Neo Caridina. I know a lot about them. And so now it's time to move up the ladder and uh, and we all kind of move to the next step and kind of see what this whole Taiwan Bee thing is all about. Um, what was it? Oh, let's see. Jordan Leroy said, we need a bingo card for the live streams. Rob Beyond's drop something, mentions Amanda, etc." <laughs> That's hilarious. You guys, that would be fun. That would be fun. But I'm not yawning this time. Although if I do, it, I mean, it might happen. I can't say it won't. But... Anyway, so really excited to start getting into Taiwan bees. Uh, about, I think about four years ago, I was breeding. Um, what were they? They're they're so freaking cool. They were called shadow pandas, which are like shadow king kongs. It's basically like the black type of Taiwan bee uh, that has white stripes. Sometimes it's fully black. It's called a black king kong or black panda, depending on how much white it has versus black. And I used to breed those, but they were with blue instead of white, and they were so gorgeous. And so, uh, so I had a lot of experience back then, but a lot has changed in the past three and a half years. And so now it's kind of time to relearn and uh, reapply some things and get really good with it, uh, start bringing some of my own and really, really enjoy it. And so that is what I'm going to do. And so I'm really excited for that. Oh, we got a $10 super chat. Josh Rugg, what's going on, man? He said, finally got to order my first shrimp. Thank you for what you do. Um, guys, I real quick, I just got to say thank you. Um, I've been getting so much positive feedback, and I promise you this isn't bragging on myself. It's bragging on the process. It's bragging on what you guys motivated me to do. It's bragging on God. You know, God is definitely the center of all of this. I know people, some people get upset when I say that, but, you know, that for me, that's what it's all about. And so it's just been a, a beautiful process that has brought us to where we are. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we started this journey uh, focusing on USA Bread Shrimp. Um, and then I couldn't meet demand. I couldn't supply enough people. The hobby was not growing the way I wanted it to grow, even though YouTube is growing and all that kind of stuff. And so then we started importing. And my whole thing with importing is to introduce the United States market, the shrimp hobby, with healthy shrimp. And that's what it's all about. And so positive feedback from you guys, from customers, from everyone – um, just about their shrimp surviving. They're doing good. They're breeding. I got babies. I got a buried mom. Like those type of things like really hype me up because that is why I do this. Like that, that is exactly it. So when I see someone like Josh Rugg dropping a $10 super chat, which is like so generous, just to say finally got to order my first shrimp. Thank you for what you're doing. Like just the fact that that someone is willing to give money just to say thank you. For what we're doing it just shows that the process is working and uh, we are moving forward and it's such a cool thing because without like I'm not saying without flip aquatics this would have never happened because uh, you never know but I'm happy to say that we are in such a good place of progressing this hobby in the United States by providing healthy parasite disease free shrimp to the United States market <clears throat> instead of just being one of those people that you know gets the shrimp and like you know, whatever you it's you bought it, you 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 pay for the diseases and stuff, and it kills their whole colony, and they quit the hobby. That is why I do this to prevent those people from ruining the hobby, um, from those of us that love it and want to spread it and enjoy it. And so, thank you so much, Josh Rugg. That means the world to me. Um, I swear to God, it really means a lot to me just to hear um, appreciation and that things are going in a good direction. Like that is just absolutely awesome. So, so much love to you guys. Really do appreciate it. And just being 100% honest, like that is truly what I believe. So I'm not just saying it just to say it. Um, I truly, truly feel that way. So thank you. Oh, so I know there's a lot of comments, a lot of questions. Um, so before we get into all that, I do want to say um, tonight, we are focusing on Taiwan bees. That doesn't mean we can't talk about other things, but we are focusing on Taiwan bees. I kind of want to get you guys all up to speed with me on where I'm at on my Taiwan bee journey and kind of share with you 
um, some things. And also we have a special, um, which we always try to do special. You guys know that if you watch this every week, um, we are doing a special on our Pinto shrimp um, because, you know, just, I don't know, they're freaking cool. And so I think the special is for 35% off. Um, <clears throat> actually, let me just double check real quick. It's always better to double check. Um, yes. So the special is for 35% off um, Pinto shrimp. So it includes black Pintos, red Pintos, and Galaxy Pintos, which Galaxy Pintos normally retail for $90. So um, that's a that's a stinking good deal. But um, I think we only have like of the of the 10 we got in, we may only have like four left. So it isn't like there's that many left. But at least, you know, the people that do get them, they, they would get a really good deal on them. And, uh, and you guys know that it's all quarantine, so they're all healthy. They're doing really well and everything like that. So super exciting. So that's what we got going on there. Um, again, Josh Rock, thank you so much. Uh, can I have a wrench, Flip Aquatics, to help with the nasty people? Um, why? Is there some there's some nasty people in here? Oh, some deleted comments. <laughs> Jeez. Just, you got to ban people like that. Let's see. <clears throat> I think I banned him. I don't know. But yeah, so <clears throat> nasty people is not a good thing. Uh, we're here to spread positivity. But anyway, so yeah, so feel free to take care of the Pinto code. 35% off any of our Pintos, red, black, galaxy, whatever you want. Um, that is if you guys are skilled and you know what's going on with the Pintos. Uh, they're same as time with these, but we're going to talk about it all today. Um Doug of the North said, oh, the new bamboo shrimp are suddenly in and looking great. That's awesome. Um, guys, you would be shocked. Like, check this out. So we did shipping this week. Uh, we shipped out probably close to 150 packages, um, which is a ton. Like, like li realistically, in an average week, we, we probably ship out like 50 packages. So to ship 150 in one week, that is a lot. It's a lot of extra work. It's three times what we're used to. And, uh, and literally zero DOA claims. Not one person emailed us about dead shrimp. Um, the only one that thought they had dead shrimp was Nisi. Shout out to Nisi. She sent me, a, her daughter sent me a, a message on Facebook and said that uh, the shrimp lost its tail. It was like cut off or something, or the shrimp was cut in half. So I'm like, oh man, like it really bummed me out. And then here, the shrimp just molted in the bag and then the, the molt looked like it got cut in half. And so I was happy to say um, that both bamboo shrimp made it to Nisi safe uh, for her and her husband, Thomas, I believe. Uh, I'd have to double check, but I believe that's what it is. So shout out to them if they're listening. I'm glad that the bamboo shrimp made it safe. So yeah, so we were very fortunate with shipping this week um, that everything got there exactly safe and sound. Uh, sorry. Hopefully this, this cough drop isn't too mean, but literally I would die without it. Um, <laughs> that might be an exaggeration. I probably wouldn't die, but my voice would feel like it was dead. Uh, Rob, you're killing me with these sales. Kang Lee, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Kang Lee, to, to be fair, if you're going to be at the aquatic experience, I'll probably have some decent sales going at the aquatic experience. Although I probably won't have Pintos left because we're probably going to, I would imagine we might sell out this week. Maybe we'll see. And so, uh, so that's what it is. 50 packs is a lot. Yeah, 50 packages is a lot. 150 is way too much. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it is crazy. But anyway, uh, getting back to the Pintos so or the Taiwan Bees. So Taiwan Bees in general are pretty, pretty freaking cool. So I will actually <clears> – <throat> let me pull up our site, and I can share with you guys, like, what type of Taiwan Bees we carry. Um you know, some types that we plan on getting in. It's always easier to do it that way. So let me see if I can share. I always forget how. Like, it's ridiculous. Screen share. Cancel. There we go. It's always right in front of me every single time. So this is our website. Um, what you do is you go to shrimp, and then you go to Taiwan B. And uh, currently, probably our best-selling thing here is definitely the Taiwan Bee Starter Pack. So if you click on that, um, this like comes with all of the basic Taiwan Bees. And so it comes with, <clears throat> what is it? Uh, 
I could just tell you, but I, I wanted to read it. It comes with five black King Kong slash panda mix, um, which this is a black p panda. Um, although it's kind of a King Kong just be just because it has less stripes than a typical panda. But the reason they call it a panda is obviously because like pandas have stripes on them and they're black and white. And then, then you have like the red panda. And these are so different from crystal reds and crystal blacks. Just so you know, it's a t totally different species, um, completely different. Um, but then it comes with two of our deep blue bolts, um, which I don't have pictured here. But if you go back to Taiwan Bees, the deep blue bolts are right here, which they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, now, the pictures aren't that big, but at least you can get an idea of what they look like. And Amanda took all these pictures. So shout out to my wife who's working right now. Um, but these guys are one of our best sellers as well, uh, the deep blue bolts. And uh, they like this time that we imported them, we've imported them twice so far. This time they look the absolute best they've ever looked. And so your basic Taiwan bees are your black pandas, your red pandas, and then these guys, your blue bolts. Not necessarily deep blue bolts, but just, you know, blue bolts in general. So you got uh, blue bolts, which are right here and right here. And then you got your black King Kongs, your red King Kongs. <clears throat> and those are your basic pandas. Um, and then from there you get into like the more... I don't know, higher end stuff, like the more like hard to create things. And so the first thing is like a Galaxy Pinto, which these are pretty new to the market. Uh, we plan on like carrying a lot more of these in the near future. Um, I really feel like my supplier really wants to sell these and he thinks they'll, they'll do really well. And so I think we're going to start getting more of these in. But they're they're really beautiful shrimp. Um, the only thing is the cost, like, you know, $90. Um, so between me and my supplier, we've been working on some things. So hopefully uh, we can really, really bring the – oh, you guys see my <laughs> 1,269 emails. Yeah, that, that is brutal. Um, don't be making fun of me on that. <laughs> you guys are funny. Who pointed that out, Flynn? You son of a gun. <laughs> but, yeah, so the Galaxy Pinto is awesome. Just the price is way too much. It usually prices people out. Um, so we're working on bringing that down. Um, the next up is red pintos, which these are my, like, these are probably my favorite for like, like if I was going to just do a straight tank, I would do these and there's multiple different types. Like you can see this one right here. This is a spotted head pinto. And then this one's like, that's actually a really nice shrimp. It's like solid red. I like it, but that would be like your zebra pinto. This one would be a zebra pinto. And then there's like, um, belly pintos where the belly has a color and not the top of the tail. And there's just a lot of different variations, um, but this is just, <clears throat> yeah, amazing how pretty a shrimp can be inexpensive. I completely agree with that. But red pintos are like, again, pretty pricey, but, um, you know, it's starting to come down. And then you go to like the black pintos, which are the same as the red pintos, just a different color. Um, they're down here. They go down a little bit more. Um, so they're $25 a piece. So we're working with my supplier to bring all these prices down. Um, so that we can be more competitive and kind of grow the Taiwan B market. Um, so that's what we're really looking into doing. Now, like metallic purples, we only have two of these, and I believe it's a male and female, but they are absolutely stunning. <clears throat> Although, <laughs> you know, $500 a piece, you know, you sell three of those a month, you're doing really good. So that's funny. But uh, we, we currently have not sold them. Um, we have people interested if it's a pair, but we haven't proven that it's a pair yet. And so that's these guys, absolutely stunning. Um, so those are like your general Taiwan bees that we carry. We're hoping to start carrying more. Um, it just depends. So like we got a lot going on. Let's see. Reef Real Estate said, answer me. I second that, King. So let's see what King said. Um, King Lee said, you can keep them all in the same tank without worrying about the mixed breeding. That is absolutely true. <clears throat> um, what else did Real Reef say? Killing me. Ha, ha, ha. I don't know. Real Reef, you're just going to have to say it again because I don't know what you said that you want me to answer. But yes, Amanda is an absolute beast when it comes to photography. She is like, she's really good. Um, she is really, really good. I got a shadow pando missioning from you. Luis, you did. That's awesome. Um, that is really cool. Uh, let's see. $500, I'm going to faint. <laughs> Stormy, I know, for real. Uh, will shrimp be available for purchase at the Aquatic Experience? The red bearded, red beard aquatics asked that. 
Yes, so we are bringing multiple species of shrimp. Um, we haven't decided on what species we're going to bring, <clears throat> but we are going to be bringing some some higher end stuff, some really cool stuff. So it'll be fun to uh, show you guys what we have going on. Um, but we have a booth. Uh, it's connected to the YouTube booth. That's all one booth, so that's going to be cool. So you'll be able to hang out with all of us YouTubers, um, be able to purchase some shrimp if you want. But we're going to have all kinds of stuff there, hard goods, um, hardscaping material, all kinds of stuff. And so it will be an absolute blast. Um, Reef Real Estate, we do not ship to Canada normally, although, <laughs> Kangley, you're terrible. Although, we can always make exceptions. We can't ship into Canada. We just usually don't. Um, Taiwan bees are not hard to breed. Um, like we're breeding them just naturally in the tanks that we're keeping them in. We're not trying to breed them, um, but they are breeding. And so uh, Jimmy has a great photography group. I didn't know that. But anyway, they, they do breed pretty easy as long as you have the right parameters. And so we'll talk about like what are the right parameters for Taiwan bees? Um, <clears throat> how do you keep them? Let me turn my phone off just because I hate when it buzzes while we're going through stuff. But anyway, so Taiwan bees are not – hard to breed as long as you have certain conditions met so the first condition is in my opinion for Taiwan bee shrimp you have to have RO water or distilled water and use a remineralizer like every single time like it's just it's that much easier to keep and breed Taiwan bees if you have RO water so um, the first thing that you need is we use Brightwell substrate um, we don't sell it on the website just because it's kind of bulky it's a pain to ship, let me tell you. Um, but we keep all of our Taiwan bees on Brightwell. And uh, you can find it on Amazon, I'm sure, uh, different places like that. But it's Brightwell substrate. Um, they sell it in different grade sides, like sizes. They sell it in different colors. Um, all Brightwell substrate buffers the exact same. It's just different colors and different sizes, just so you know. So that will make it really easy on you. Um, so Brightwell substrate. Um, we don't add any additives to the substrate. Um, we don't put anything down. Like some people put old sea mud, things like that. Um, we do not do that currently. Now, if we were going to set up like a tank to breed those purple shrimp or something like that, we would probably spend the extra money to do it. Um, but it's not necessary. You definitely do not have to do it. It just, you know, it helps. Like every little bit helps. So what we do is <laughs> bright well, and then we put in RO water, and we remineralize it with a GH plus from salty shrimp uh, to a TDS 100. And uh, that seems to be perfect for us. Uh, it seems to be, work really, really well. Um, but really anything between like 80 and 120 will work pretty good. And then honestly, just let the tank sit for a couple days. <coughs> let the tank sit for a couple days and it's usually pretty good to go for shrimp. Um, you wanna get good algae growth going in a Taiwan B tank just because you know, they, they they can be somewhat sensitive. So to give them some natural food always helps. Um, a well cycle tank always helps. Um, but honestly, when we set up a tank, let me just tell you exactly how we do it. And then anything you do more in excess is only going to help more. So bag of Brightwell, we put it in the tank. Uh, we get about half an inch of substrate level. Um, so it's not very deep. It's, it's actually pretty shallow substrate wise. Uh, we use a matten filter. Matten filter I always highly recommend. Um, we put RO, RO water in there, remineralize with salty shrimp GH from, yeah, salty shrimp GH to a TDS of 100. Um, we let the tank go for 24 hours. Uh, we add bacteria from Fluval. We're also using the Brightwell bacteria too. Um, really, bacteria is bacteria, so it doesn't really matter where it comes from. Uh, we usually add that for the first month. We do it about three times a week uh, roughly and then uh, and then after that the tank's good to go and anything you do in excess is going to help drastically like i think it is so important for you guys to have algae growth in a shrimp tank um, because when we have babies in a tank and there's no algae the survival rate is a lot less even though we're feeding you know products like bacteria ae and things like that uh, tanks that have algae um, they the baby's like survival like shoots way up. So the more algae, the better off you're gonna be. Uh, the green algae is the best. And so uh, so there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, let's see. 
I think somebody just asked a question. Uh, oh, Flynn said, I really want some shrimp from the AE, but after a five-hour flight in Canadian border security, I feel that it wouldn't work out. Um, I love shrimp. I just don't know how to keep them alive. That's not good art. Uh, Flynn, so we can um, we can ship you some from, from Chicago. So, like, if you want, we can literally get you some in Chicago, and before you fly out on Saturday or whenever you're flying out, um, I can bring something to pack them up, and we can ship them from Chicago to your house, or I can ship them Monday to your house, and, uh, and usually – we have no problems whatsoever shipping into Canada. And so uh, so we'll talk about that. But don't worry, Flynn. I will take good care of you. Um, Ice, Icy Kick says, what snails would you would do well in a Taiwan bee tank? So snails, um, most of them, in my experience, do not like a low pH just because their shell like starts to deteriorate. Um, things like that. <clears throat> Probably the only ones that I would feel safe keeping in a low pH, like soft water, would be mystery snails. And uh, they don't eat your plants or anything. And they're like, they're pretty darn hardy. Um, we've had some really good success with them. So I would probably recommend mystery snails. Although I personally have never kept mystery snails with Taiwan bee shrimp. Um, but in theory, I don't see it being an issue whatsoever. So I would go with mystery snails. Uh, Rob, I'm thinking about doing a 50-gallon low boy tank for Taiwan bees. Kangley, you would be my hero if you did a 50-gallon Taiwan bee tank for one of those low boys. And if you guys don't know what a 50-gallon low boy is, it is literally 48 inches by 24 inches by 10 inches tall. So the tank is, like, perfect for shrimp. Um, uh, Reef Real Estate, I said – as a business, as Flip Aquatics, we do not ship into Canada, although we can make exceptions. So, like, if you emailed me and you're like, hey, I really want these shrimp, I can send them to you in Canada. But the thing about Canada is I can't guarantee them because, like, customs can mess it up sometimes. They could be in the mail for, you know, two weeks. Like, you just never know. Um, <clears throat> also, what is the other thing? Oh, shipping is really expensive going into Canada. So I can ship there, and I can make special requests for people, but it is it is a pain in the butt, and it costs a lot of money. Like it costs like fifty bucks to ship it there, and it still takes a week. Like it's, it's ridiculous. So we can make it happen. I'm just saying, like, if you have a local supplier, it's probably better as long as they're healthy shrimp. But if you really want shrimp from me, and you know we guarantee them healthy, uh, every time we shipped into Canada, we have never once had a problem. Never. We've never had DOAs. We never had anything. But I just say that it could happen. And, uh, and as long as you're willing to take that risk and pay the extra for shipping, um, then I would be more than happy to oblige. <laughs> I, that, that just sounded like a good word, so I figured I'd use it. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, my throat's killing me, though, just being honest with you guys. My throat has been hurting so bad. But anyway, oh, I almost fell. <laughs> Check it off the bingo list, as everyone else was saying earlier. So some cool news is my grandpa is in town. Um, <clears throat> my grandpa lives in Atlanta. I don't get to see him too often. Um, and he is, like, a really good role model for me. So I get to hang out with him and my uncle tonight. Again, I don't get to see either of them very often. And they're coming to check out the, the shrimp warehouse. Um, hang out and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited to show them that. I'm actually meeting them at 7:30, so an hour from now, and uh, and it will be really cool to show them the the place. Um, but some stuff that I probably I haven't. Oh, let's see. Kyle dropped a five dollar super chat. Uh, shout out to Kyle. Uh, Kyle said you have been super generous every time I come to you for anything, Rob, and I truly appreciate it. Uh, TC plants, rabbit, slash Malaysian trumpet snails, and curls, all perfect. So, Kyle, I hope you're happy with the way that the reds look. Um, I tried to pick out some really nice ones for you. And uh, and so hopefully – so Kyle actually wanted fire reds or painted fire reds. And I told him, like, our cherry shrimp are pretty much fire reds when you get the imported ones. And so uh, so whenever, whenever someone says, like, a special request, <clears throat> I always try to – you know, I always try to help them out. 
And so you're welcome, Kyle. Thank you so much for the super chat. I uh, really appreciate that. Stormy Mist says, Rob, go to the doctor. I know. I, I need to. See, I have this problem where I work too much. <laughs> and uh, you can ask my, my my wife. She will tell you. And, uh, and I hate going to the doctor. I hate taking time off. And it's just one of those things. Nisi's here. Nisi, I was telling him about how your shrimp got cut in half. Um, so Abraham Alberez said, can Taiwan bee shrimp mix breed? So you can keep every type of Taiwan bee shrimp in the same tank. And they can breed, interbreed, do whatever they want, and it will not hurt the genetics of the shrimp. That is the coolest thing about them. So you can keep blues, you can keep blacks, you can keep reds, you can mix them all together, and they're just going to have blue, red, and black babies. They're not going to have like, you know, tie-dye babies. So they're not like Neocaridina, but they can mix, and that is the coolest part about them. You can have a ton of them in one tank, and it's just really cool. Now, when you start mixing like Pintos in there and things like that, those have like tiger genetics and crystal red genetics. So there's a chance you could get some funky-looking shrimp. Um, but even the funky looking shrimp can be worth a lot of money. So we've seen that with like um, the Dancy Men shrimp from Monica Puller. Um, <clears throat> also her safari line, which are all beautiful, beautiful, stunning, absolutely awesome shrimp. And uh, I'm lucky enough to have a handful of them. But they, uh, you can get some, uh, some crazy stuff going. <clears throat> Kay Walker said... Hey, Rob, betadine throat gargle works well. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to have to look that up. So I'm going to highlight that and copy and paste it. Copy? Actually, I'll just search Google for it. Betadine. I don't know. Any matten filter? Hey, Ken Lee. No, seriously, I'll make you a custom matten filter. If you want a 50-gallon low boy, and you need a matten filter. I'll custom make you some because I want to get a couple 50 gallon low boys. <clears throat> and so what I'll do is I'll have a couple custom ones made for us both. So if you really want some, you let me know and we'll uh, we'll work out the details. But I would be more than happy to make you some custom matten filters. And thank you for the $5 super chat. Search Google for that. Okay, got it. Yeah, I did it on my iPhone. That's so funny. Uh, let's see. Stormy said, okay, Rob, we got it. You are a workaholic. Take care of yourself. Go to the doctor. <laughs> I love you, Stormy. Seriously, I think Emma's 13, and uh, she's just awesome. So got to go check the rest later. Thanks for answering on breeding. You're welcome, George Jones. Uh, thanks for hanging out for a little bit. Uh, Jordan Leroy said, a little whiskey before bed if you drink. We'll clear it up in no time. An ancient Scottish treatment. That is hilarious. Uh, I think, honestly, I think Nick Richards brought me some whiskey when he came, and I still have it laying around, so I really could do that. Amanda told me to do that too, but I'm like, no, I don't like whiskey. Um, yeah, so that's that. I don't encourage you guys to drink. <coughs> um, Reed Real Estate said, hey, all, I'm a noob to the, to the tube and have a channel, but only 110 subs. We'll sub to you when you sub to me. Oh, I better go sub them then. <laughs> oh, man. I remember, seriously, I remember the struggles of being a small YouTuber. Um, when I was, seriously, I started a YouTube channel, and I remember getting like 100 views on a video, and I was like, yes, so excited. And then uh, I remember subbing people and them not subbing me back. I'm like, these guys are terrible. Like, they don't even sub me back. And uh, I remember, like, comment on videos being like, hey, like, I subbed, like, hoping they would sub me back. Uh, it was good. It's so fun. It is so fun. Like, just remembering the grind. Like, how, how you get from point A to point B is such a fun, fun time. <clears throat> uh, Kang Lee, <laughs> how would you do that? Mind blown, Nisi. That autocorrect is going to get you. Um, but anyway, what, what else we got going on? Oh yeah, so uh, I did some research. I figured out, I figured out like what a Thai bee is, and what a Thai tea bee is, uh, and different things like that. So, if you guys didn't know this, I wanted to look it up and make sure I was right. Um, Amanda was making fun of me. So a Thai bee 
It's T-I-B-E-E. -E. Tybee is when you mix a tiger shrimp with a crystal red shrimp. And then you can get multiple gen generations of a Tybee. Um, and that's how they like develop, you know, the, the really unique shrimp. Um, then you have a Thai TB, which is a Taiwan bee mixed back with a Thai bee. <clears throat> and a Thai bee is a tiger and a bee shrimp mixed together. Um, so that's a Thai TB. And then you also have a Tange Thai bee, which is a, I think it's a Tange Thai. Yes, I believe so. Um, it's a tangerine tiger mixed with a, um, a Taiwan bee. So those are the three like main terms. Uh, Stormy's only 12, not 13. I got to correct myself. And so, um, yeah, so there's like a lot of, uh, a lot of like new things out there. I'm sure there's going to be new terms coming up. I'm sure we're going to create new terms, <laughs> me and you guys, we're going to have fun doing that. And so I'm really excited to kind of grow the Taiwan bee hobby. Um, just because I feel like they're getting hardier and hardier and there's new lines out there. And, uh, so there's a lot of new stuff we could do with Taiwan bees. <clears throat> um, but we're still always going to have the, the Neos. Um, I think we're going to try getting green jades again because a lot of people have been asking about them and, uh, and still get in a lot of different stuff. So don't think we're going anywhere with those, but I do want to start moving more into like the rare stuff and getting some really cool stuff and hopefully lower the price of those. And so it's going to be really cool. Um, Rob, it works a treat. Honestly, I swear. Buy it. Buy it. Whiskey. There's the reason why the Scots call it water of life. <laughs> Jordan, that's hilarious. <clears throat> I need to come out to Scotland. Um, I would absolutely love that. So you guys got to let me know if there's any fish clubs out there that I could come speak at or anything like that. I would absolutely 100% love to come to Scotland. Um, Real Reef Real Estate said, are these shrimp reef safe? No, they're all freshwater shrimp. There are a lot of reef safe shrimp like uh, cleaner shrimp. You got fire shrimp. Pistol shrimp, I believe those are reef shape. Reef shape. So there's a lot of good stuff. Kenneth Ben, my buddy. Kenneth Ben is like the man, guys. You you just need to know that. Uh, Kenneth Ben is awesome. He said bacteria AE by Glass Garden is the bacteria he uses. So bacteria AE is not the bacteria I use to cycle a tank. Uh, bacteria AE is the bacteria I use to feed the baby shrimp. Um, the actual type of bacteria I use to cycle a tank um, is called, it's fluval cycle is one. And then the other one is the Brightwell version of it, which I don't know the name of it. It's just Brightwell bacteria, which, I mean, now that we're talking about it, I might as well look it up so you guys don't get the wrong thing. Um, let me type in Brightwell live bacteria and just see if it would have came up. I don't know if this is it or not. Now I got to check my package and make sure. <clears throat> yes, so this is it. It is called uh, Microbacter uh, by Brightwell Aquatics. So that's what we use. So if you guys want to look that up, the other one's Fluval Cycle. Uh, we use both pretty much the same. Um, Nisi drop the two dollar super chat. Nisi, you do so much. Stop super chatting me. She says, shout out to King Lee for magics. <laughs> oh, he taught you how to super chat through the phone. That's so cool. Um, Rory said, Rob, it's a pleasure to tune in Sunday nights. Love your channel. Wish I could buy shrimp from you, but I can't be on the other side of the pond. P.S. What snails are best for cherry shrimps? Thank you so much, Rory. Really appreciate the love and support. Um, but the type of the type of snails that we use, uh, Malaysian trumpet snails are my favorite. Actually, they're probably not my favorite anymore, but they're the most efficient. Uh, they get down the substrate, they stir it up, they won't overpopulate. Um, so they're really, really awesome. So <clears throat> Malaysian trumpet snails would be number one for efficient. Um, the other one that I really, really love is uh, mystery snails. They have like stolen my heart lately um, because there's so many different colors. And they really don't breed. Like, they might lay a clutch of eggs, but you can take it out if you don't want them. Uh, but they are so stinking cool. And they have so many different colors. Like, so awesome. And the nice thing is, is if any shrimp do die, they eat them. So you don't you don't ever get that ammonia spike or anything like that. And so it's really, really cool. So those are my favorite. Huh. Let's see what Robert Merle said. 
Oh, let's answer Mandolin first. Mandolin, or yeah, Mandolin FSU said, when will the Nano Fish be on the website? I uh, got my Fancy Blues from you this week. They're doing great. That's awesome that the Fancy Blues are doing great. I'm really happy to hear that. Um, when will the fish be up on the site? They're going to be up on the site this weekend. So this weekend marks two weeks, which means um, they're going to be ready by the aquatic experience. So we're going to list them. And, uh, and then we'll probably do some test shipping. <clears throat> so we won't list like all of them for sale. Uh, but I'm sure that the way that we ship will work for nano fish as well as the shrimp. Because really, I think shrimp are probably less hardy than nano fish. Um, like, I mean, that that's what I would assume. And so we never have problems shipping shrimp, so we shouldn't have any problems shipping fish. Um, but we may learn a quick lesson, and we'll have to readjust. But I think it's going to be good. So the shrimp or the fish will be up on the website next weekend. <clears throat> and I'll probably do a special on them on the Sunday live stream. Um, that's what I'm thinking. I'll, like, kick off, like, having them and do a special on them. Uh, Robert Merle, my man, Robert Merle. Oh, my gosh. Me and Robert Merle, Bob Merle, we had the craziest thing. I sent him some Amano shrimp. And they were in the mail for like forever, <laughs> like literally two and a half weeks. They made it back to me. They were all safe. I shipped another set of them out. He got them and everything worked out. But that's when I learned that a mono shrimp can literally live without food and any filtration for two and a half weeks. And not one died. It's just crazy. So it's one of those freaks things. But getting back on the Taiwan B train, uh, Robert Merrill said, I mix red, black, and yellow pandas slash King Kongs. And got some blue bolts, whites, and yellows with stripes. That's so cool. That is the best thing about yeah, Taiwan bees. You can mix them all together, and you get the craziest patterns, cool stripes, cool shrimp. And uh, people don't frown on it. So that that's really, really cool. Um, so that's good to hear. I'm glad that you're having success with them, Robert. Or Bob. <clears throat> that's awesome. Jordan Leroy said, uh, Rob only deals in freshwater shrimp. That is true. Uh, Red Bearded Aquatic says, where to buy a 50 long? Um, so the 50 gallon, it's 48 by 24 by 10. Um, if you live close to me, I could order one for you, but you probably don't. And so you could probably just get them at your local pet store. I'm sure most of them will carry it. Um, but yeah, Kay Walker said, hey, Rob, you may want to come up with the S numbers like Plecos and have L number Neos. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, that would be crazy. A lot of work. Emerald Pets, Natasha. What's going on, Natasha? She said, Rob, how are the purple zebras doing? So we got in some purple zebra shrimp. They're actually brackish water shrimp, although they can live in fresh water. And uh, we cut in a lot of them because Amanda really wanted to breed them. And they're doing fantastic. We actually have like <clears> – <throat> we probably have a close to 100 larvae, um, which we're hoping that will turn into baby shrimp. Uh, we're not sure yet. And so really excited about that. So we shall see. Uh, Lucas did, just did a quick stream. Shout out to Lucas Bretz, LR Bretz Aquatics. Um, he's a good dude. Um, Kenneth Ben said, I love diesel. You need to get some Stardust shrimp. Kenneth Ben, you are a smart man. I'm actually going to ask Stardust <clears throat> and see if I can get some in uh, the next time I import. The Stardust's are freaking cool um ic kick says what exactly is a stardust bee so <clears throat> again i'm not very familiar on the newer types of taiwan bees um except for the ones that i carry so stardust basically means that's a shrimp that has like little specks on it like stars and i'm not sure how they created them like what they what type of shrimp they mix i think there's a golden bee involved um because golden bees tend to have like sparkling almost and so that's what I'm guessing. Uh, so a Stardust bee is just one that has like little speckles all over it in a different color, and it looks like Stardust. Like it just looks like a bunch of stars on the shrimp. Uh, Flint's Fish Form said, is there only three weeks until Chicago? Yes, there is. It is coming so quick. Like, oh, I'm getting stressed out just thinking about it. It's going to be a blast, though. <clears throat> it's going to be a blast. Um, and just in case you guys are just now tuning in, we are running a special on Taiwan Bee Shrimp this weekend. Um, it's only on the Pintos, though. So it's on the Black Pintos, the Red Pintos, and the Galaxy Pintos. And they're all 35% off. Um, the coupon code is down below. So feel free to take advantage of that. 
And, uh, you know, I always say I really appreciate it if you do. It helps us out. Um, so that's always awesome. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, JC Tank says, Rob, my my fire red shrimp have been dying one to three days recently. Uh, wow, that's not good. Parameters seem okay. 40 nitrate with lots of plants. I don't see any fungus or anything unusual. Any ideas? Um, so if you got them from me, um, let me know that. But let's assume you didn't get them from me. So you could think of a couple things. If just one is dying every now and then, it's either that they're adjusting if they're new shrimp, um, or it could be that they're old. Um, so they could just be dying off, like naturally. Um, I would say if you were losing one every day, you probably have a problem. But if you're just losing one every now and then, it's probably not that big of a deal. Um, hopefully you have like 20, and odds are they'll breed, they'll have babies, and then those babies will live, and then you'll be good. But 40 nitrate isn't terrible. Um, I mean, I would I would like to see that come down if possible. <clears throat> like, you know, you want to keep it as low as you can, like maybe 20, maybe 10. Um, but uh, that shouldn't be enough to like really kill them. Could be. Um, but so I would try to get that down and just be as consistent as you can. Like shrimp gets stressed out in shipping. Like it's just, it's part of shrimping, I guess. Oh, Jordan Leary said, my Malaysian trumpet sales have overrunning tank and eat my plants a bit. So if Malaysian trumpet sales overran your tank, it means that you're probably overfeeding um, because they, Malaysian trumpet sales are like, if you don't feed them, they start dying off. And so if you feed them the perfect amount, they usually won't overpopulate. Um, so that could be something. So maybe tone back on your feeding. <clears throat> I've never had Malaysian trumpet snails eat plants before, so that's news to me. Um, but it, it could happen. It definitely could happen, um, especially if they're hungry enough. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dwayne Kidgel said, what kind of process do you go through when, when thinking about which shrimp to risk taking to the show? Uh, Dwayne, that is an amazing question. Um, so... It is an extremely hard process to decide what we want to take to the show because you have to think like, first of all, what's going to be there? What are people going to be selling? What are people looking for? Are you going to have mainly experienced hobbyists? Are you going to have advanced hobbyists? So you have to decide like how many like advanced species am I going to bring? How many simple species am I going to bring? Um, so the thing is we've been going, this will be our third year. So the hope is, is everyone that has bought from us previously is has upped their game so like now like the first year they bought cherry shrimp the second year they bought crystal reds now this year they should in theory be wanting taiwan bees um but there's going to be different people coming and so it's really tough to decide so i think we just stick to what what works best for us like what we sell the most of and uh and just hope that those type of people are there and then also have like those you know the bread and butter stuff and then also have like the rare stuff that like the advanced hobbyist is coming in like that is an awesome shrimp. I want to buy that shrimp right there. So we could get a little bit of everything, but it is a tough process to decide what we want to take. Oh, I'm reading this thing. Ender Flight said, never thought cannibal shrimp would be a useful thing to me, but here we are. Cannibal shrimp. So I'm not sure what that means. Um, you'll have to elaborate a little bit more. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, man, I missed a lot. Uh, Arsenal of Color Aquatics says, Rob, any royal orange-eyed blue tigers available soon? We have been literally trying to breed them for forever. And we have a decent amount, but we, like, literally if I post them on the website, we'd be sold out tomorrow. Like, that's, like, so many people want them, and we literally do not have the supply for them. Like, if I sold 100 then I probably would have to wait another year to be able to sell them again. Like that's like, we're, we're this close to having enough, but we don't. And so, uh, so I might import some in. I also have some people that have been breeding them for me. So hopefully that starts kicking up. So hopefully we will have some to sell soon. Um, but we do not at the moment. Jordan Rogers said, ever kept Cardinal Sulawesi shrimp? Um, we have before. I killed them. Um, <laughs> I had them going really good, and then I introduced wild caught ones to it, and it just wiped out the population. Bad decision, really bad decision. Um, but they are an awesome shrimp. They are pretty hardy, believe it or not. Um, when we had them, they, I mean, they did really good. The wild caught did terrible. 
Um, but that, you know, that's just how it is. And we kind of messed up our tank setup, I think. So <clears throat> it was a little too hard for him. But we will be getting them in at some point in the near future. And so, uh, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. Um, fish will die much faster than shrimp will do. Uh, will due to greater production of ammonia, Rob. So that's going back to shipping fish. But we plan on shipping fish the same way we ship shrimp. And so we ship them very sparingly. Like, you know, we don't put a ton of fish in one bag and hope they make it. Um, we put small amounts of fish in bags and then know that they're going to make it. And so we're going to we're gonna do some experimenting in trial and error. And we will find a very good method for shipping them. Because at the end of the day, like, I care about the fish we send. I care about the shrimp we send. I want them to survive. So I'm going to do everything in my power to make them get to their point and hope they make it in one piece. So that that is always my uh, that is always my intent. So we will ship them very sparingly. And we are doing nano fish. So they're a lot smaller. Um, don't take up as much room, things like that. So thank you for the feedback, though. Um, Mike Kinseth said, can I add Thai micro crabs to red cherry shrimp tanks? Um, absolutely. I mean, we keep them with tangerine tigers. And they do well. They prefer a lower pH. Um, so I'd go with like crystal reds or tangerine tigers or something like that. But you can definitely keep them with other shrimp. Kyle's Aquatics. Um, Rob, my shrimp have never attacked food like they attack shrimp king complete. It's the best food I've seen. So that is great to hear. Um, my buddy, Chris Lukup, um, just an awesome guy. He... Uh, that's his brand of food, Shrimp King food. We love it. We use it. We support them. And so Shrimp King Complete is one of our favorites, <clears throat> and we feed it to all of our shrimp. So definitely agree with you there. I'm glad that, that your shrimp agree as well. Uh, will you offer more mystery snail colors? Uh, Veronica V asked. So yes, we actually have more colors now. Uh, they're just still in quarantine. They probably won't be out of quarantine, I think, until after the aquatic experience. So like – Right in time for like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we'll have way more mystery snails in stock in different colors. So, yes, we definitely will have some more colors and different things. Thanks for asking. Uh, the turtle girl is lurking. Lumpy dog. We got lumpy dog in the house. YouTube is tripping out. It keeps flipping between 114 watchers and 14 watchers. What the heck? <laughs> so we're going to stick with hopefully it's 114. Um, I'm just waiting for you to finish the quarantine for those new apple snails, mystery snails, so I can buy them. Yes, yeah, so we have a bunch in stock, or we will. My favorite right now, I think they were not the ivory ones. Oh, what are they called? I don't know. It's slipping my head. But they have like a yellow shell, and they're seriously so cool. <clears throat> I love the color. I do want to say it's almost 7 o'clock, and I have not yawned, so knock on wood. Um. Let's see. Nisi. Oh, and Sazanza's out of here. See us, Sazanza. Probably already gone, though. Uh, Stormy Mist said, at Petco, my 40, the 40 gallon breeder are $100, something like that. I was like, what? So you got to wait for the dollar per gallon sale, and then you get for 40 bucks. Actually, they might have taken the 40 gallon off the dollar per gallon sale. I don't remember. Uh, Nisi said, Rob, do you have tips for breeding bamboo shrimp or mono shrimp? Um, so, if, I got to look up to see how to breed bamboo shrimp, but I know mono shrimp need brackish water. I've never really bred them before, um, but I know they need brackish water. Um, Dirt Diver dropping a $5 super chat. Thank you guys so much for the super chats tonight. Um, it really does help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, can you keep multiple neo colonies in the same tank if you use one of your sponge tank dividers to keep them apart? Big fan of your videos, by the way. Um, yeah, you 100% can. Um, babies will not get through it. The one thing that you have to watch out is shrimp will crawl over the top and onto the other side. Um, so make sure your glass top, you know, whatever you're using to cover the tank, make sure it sits against there so the shrimp can't crawl across. Um, but yes, you definitely can keep multiple types of neocaridina in the same tank, 100%. Thank you for asking, and thank you so much for the super chat. Um, how long does it take to set up a tank for shrimp? Michelle Angel said. So <clears throat> to be completely honest, I've set up some in a day. Like I've literally – like as long as you have everything, you can set it up like real easy. They're, they're very simple setups as long as you're not doing it for like display. 
um, the very simple setups and with live bacteria, you can have them ready within 24 hours. You know I mean, we've done it. Um, I don't recommend it. I think there's much better ways to do it, but it can be done as long as it just depends on your experience level. So I'll have to do a video and share with you guys exactly how I set up a tank. And uh, just so you guys can have some confidence and know that like somebody that, you know, takes care of thousands and thousands of shrimp, this is how they set it up and you can do it too. And it should work. Actually, it will work as long as, as, long as you do everything that I do, it will work because it works for us. Um, Rory, thank you so much. Dropping a $10 Euro super chat. Uh, thank you so much. He said, thanks for answering Rob. Appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to help top man. Thank you so much, Rory. Um, man, I would love to come out to the UK eventually, Europe, somewhere over there. Um, next time there's a big shrimp competition, I think I'm going to come out. <clears throat> That's awesome. Thank you so much. You guys, seriously, like, you guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for showing me love. Thank you for being there for me. Um, really, really love you guys and appreciate all that you do. Um, Stormy Miss said, I don't have money to do super chats, but I will do other things. Stormy, you already do other things. You're here supporting, commenting. Um, that means the world to me. So it doesn't matter, um, you know, if you're dropping a hundred dollars super chat or if you're dropping a comment. I, I love you guys and I appreciate it. Um, uh, Isen Kalad said, Rob, are detritus worms bad for shrimp? So detritus worms are not bad for shrimp. <clears throat> they really, um, they don't really have negative effects on the tank. They will clean up your substrate. So. Uh, actually, they're stirring up your substrate a little bit, so it should help with gas pockets. Um, I've never put that to the test. I know Malaysian trumpet snails help with gas pockets, but I don't. In theory, the trace worm should help, um, but it's not proven. But so they do not negatively affect shrimp. Now, planaria or um, hydra or things like that, those could definitely um, do play a negative effect on your tank. So watch out for those. Um, but yeah. So tonight, yeah, I got to go meet with my grandparents but or my grandpa and show them the warehouse, which I'm super excited for. But we do have some uh, some that cool special going on, the Pintos. Feel free to check out those details down below. Um, look forward, guys. Seriously, look forward to the 400-gallon um, shrimp tank coming soon. It will probably be up before Christmas or right around Christmas. And uh, that is going to be a blast. That's going to be a fun series that I'm sure you guys will really enjoy. And I think I'm going to do a ton of blue bolts in there and just really, like, blow it up. Um, so that's going to be a blast. So look forward to more nano fish. Um, we're just going to keep expanding, keep growing, and doing more things. And I'm just so excited for the future of Flip Aquatics, the future of the YouTube channel. Um, we're just all going to keep growing together. And, uh, and that's the fun of it. And so, seriously, I love you guys so much. Thank you for being a supporter. Thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for showing love, and uh, thank you for just supporting me um, all the time. Um, love you guys so much. I will try to do a live stream on Wednesday. Um, I haven't done one in a while. I know um, – oh, I'm going to Buffalo, New York this week. Uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. near Buffalo, New York. I'm going to be speaking. Um, you can check out those details. Here, I'll just put up really fast, and then we'll call it a night. <clears throat> but let's see. Home. Robert. All right, so I am speaking at the TF TFCEC, um, which that stands for the Tropical Fish Club of Erie County in New York. Um, I'm going to be speaking at their club this coming Tuesday, uh, October 17th at 7 p.m. Um, I'll share all the details. Actually, here, I'll do this. Since you guys are here, I'm going to share my screen with you. And, uh, and this is all the details. So you got um, Tuesday, October 17th. This is where it's going to be. It's going to be at the Chicken Coop, uh, 299 Lee Decker Road, uh, West Seneca, New York. <clears throat> so that's going to be fun. Um, so I'm going to be there. I cannot wait. Uh, it, there's nothing better than speaking to people about your passion and showing some love for some shrimp. And so – I forget when I wrote this article. I wrote this little thing, um, but this is a this is a write up that I did, kind of talking about who I am and what I believe in and where I came from, a little background, uh, things like this. <laughs> this is what it says: Robert's dream is to provide the U.S. market with USA bread 
and tank raised shrimp. He believes that uh, breeding shrimp in captivity and indoors will reduce the spread of diseases and parasites amongst the hobby. Flip Aquatics plans to re uh, reduce the amount of shrimp taken from the wild. The shrimp Flip Aquatics produces spend less time traveling and therefore lead to better results amongst hobbyists. So you can tell that I wrote that description before we started importing, um, but that still remains the same. That, that would be like the ultimate dream. Um, unfortunately, it just it, it didn't happen with the way it was going, um, but we are still providing the U.S. market with some healthy shrimp, which that is all that matters. <clears throat> and so, you guys, hopefully I will see some of you in New York, Buffalo area, Seneca. Um, that is going to be a good time, and it would be really cool to meet some of you in person. So if you're free Tuesday night at 7 p.m., come check me out. Uh, I can't wait to do a little talk on how to breed shrimp, so it will be good. But I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your orders. Thank you for subscribing. So much love. You guys make it a great rest of your weekend or beginning of your week. And I'll talk with you guys soon. Later.